Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. STEMI following laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Whoa, guys, I think we're on the set of Game of Hearts. You know that awesome show on HBO with all the different houses, all battling for the throne that's made up of the steel castings of all the hearts that the crazy king defeated when he made the throne? You know the one. This must be the filming set for the final season. Let's talk about our clinical case before the cast and crew get here. John Winter is a 52-year-old man presenting for... Oh, they just give us the diagnosis in this case. It's cholelithiasis. So he's having biliary colic bad enough to bring him into the ED. So the attending surgeon wants to take him back right now and just get it over with. Great. Well, let's get him teed up to the OR just like the team did. And hmm, looks like he got the surgery just fine. But the next day, he had a heart attack. What the heck? I guess we should have noted the fact that he hasn't seen a doctor in 20 years and he's a smoker. Let's see what else pops up when we look at his case a little closer. Looks like someone didn't study her lines enough yet. She's having a panic attack, complete with chest pain. Just like our patient, who was reporting some occasional stable angina, as well as an inability to climb a flight of stairs without stopping to catch his breath. And based on these vital signs, this patient also has untreated hypertension. So, hypertension, angina, smoking, and all he's got is some gallstones? <laughs> Jeez. The team still took him back even with all that going on. I mean, okay, his ECG was fine, but that doesn't really say much. This fictional surgical team clearly didn't use Sketchy Medical to study for their fictional boards. Uh, let's see if we can do a better job. Guys, 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 summer is coming. <laughs> Man, I can't wait for this final season to come out. It's going to be so satisfying to have all the different story threads all wrapped up effectively with appropriate character arcs that make sense and fit the whole rest of the show. That's got to be a stressful situation for the writers to meet all their fans' high expectations. Kind of like how surgery is a major physiologic stress for any patient. But in patients with pre-existing cardiac disease, perioperative cardiac events are a significant source of morbidity and mortality. One recent large database study determined the incidence at approximately 3% for perioperative major adverse cardiovascular and cerebrovascular events, including cardiac death, non-fatal myocardial infarction, heart failure, or ventricular tachycardia. This works out to the same number of characters that actually managed to survive the game of hearts. Approximately one in every 33. Thankfully, you don't have to be a Citadel-trained Meister to identify at-risk patients. The risk of having a cardiac event is all based on individual risk, and figuring this out comes primarily from the H&P. Any patient being considered for surgery should be assessed for general operative risk, including cardiac risk assessment. Does this mean that every patient needs preoperative testing? No. Although cardiac risk needs to be considered in all patients undergoing surgery, additional workup is not always required. For example, when emergency surgery is necessary, like when someone gets stabbed in the chest with a sword like this guy in his fancy suit all set up for being CGI'd, there's simply not enough time to work up, optimize a patient, and minimize their perioperative risk. So instead, we get them to the OR ASAP and focus on careful post-operative monitoring for cardiac events. Just like we don't worry about this guy until post-production, when we can add in all that fancy CGI on his character to make him look like an undead skeleton. Our clinical case sure doesn't sound like an emergency at all. He's only got cholelithiasis, so I don't think he needed to be rushed off to surgery. For elective and urgent surgeries, we return to the idea that the H&P will guide us to which patients need more workup. Any H&P worth its salt contains a review of systems that is focused and appropriate, like this actress reviewing her lines. Too bad she forgot to memorize them before her call time. So now she's in a bit of a panic. Not so good for her, but at least it lets us review critical ROS components to evaluate for possible cardiac issues. Specifically, you need to ask about chest pain, shortness of breath, and symptoms of heart failure. At least she has a comfy landing on those pillows for when she passes out in about three seconds. This is also a great time to assess a patient's functional status. For this, we use METs, or metabolic equivalent tasks, estimated on a scale from 1 to 10. A single MET is equivalent to a bedridden patient, like this guy laying down on the job. 
he's not too functional. Whereas 10 Met is super functional, like our super functional bricklayer. That's a heavy load. An example of 10 Mets would be uh, slaying an undead giant. 4 Mets is equivalent to climbing a flight of stairs or walking up an incline, time traveling into the past by telepathically linking with some tree roots, participating in moderate recreational activity, or doing light housework, like stabbing your castle guests in the back while hosting their wedding. We'll cover this more later, but a patient who can do a 4 Mets activity is generally at low risk of a perioperative cardiac event. So asking your patients these simple questions is a fast way to identify their functional status. For our clinical case patient, he was not able to walk up a flight of stairs, so we can say that his METs are probably less than four. Another method to assess functional status is the American Society of Anesthesiologists Physical Status Scale, which breaks surgical patients into six categories to capture risk of perioperative mortality. ASA1 is a normal, healthy patient. ASA6 is a brain-dead patient who is an organ donor, or like the aforementioned zombie skeletons, but I'm pretty sure their organs are in no shape for donation. In between are shades of gray of an increasingly unhealthy patients with increasing likelihood of perioperative mortality. In order to determine risk for a patient, we need to know about their medical, social, and family history. Whoa, this lead scriptwriter is getting really worked up. Is, is that... Is that James R.R. R. Barton, the creator of this very show? <laughs> no wonder he's pissed. Someone absolutely tanked on the writing for the final season of his show. Look at him. Telling them that their script doesn't even fit the history he's created, which makes me think of a patient's medical history. As we covered in the introduction, an individual's risk of having a cardiac event during the perioperative period is determined by their baseline risk. Past medical history plays a significant role in this. Certain major conditions on history are going to trigger an automatic workup, which is why these symbols are positioned near our workup section. We'll talk more about these in a bit, but these conditions include acute coronary syndrome, a recent MI, getting a piece of obsidian shoved into the heart, thereby turning the patient into a demon overlord, decompensated or new-onset heart failure, significant arrhythmias, or significant valvular disease, which all require specialist evaluation and may need optimization prior to any urgent or elective surgery. In the case of the demon overlord, though, I'm pretty sure it's going to take a different kind of specialist. Like some young plucky girl who's mastered all the different fighting styles across the world. I'll bet her name is Enya or something. <laughs> 